Hey, welcome to Jimmy's Records and Tapes. I am Jimmy Pardo, and today we're talking about 1980. We've got it on vinyl, CD and cassette. We've got pop rock, heavy metal, punk, funk, rap, and new wave. All sales are final, but you'll never regret all the music you get at Jimmy's Records and Tapes. I'm loving music again. Hey everybody, welcome to Jimmy's Records and Tapes. As I said earlier, we're talking about 1980. It's a brand new decade, isn't it? Uh, 80 was a rough year. What happened in 1980? Well, Mount St. Helens erupted. Uh, depending where you're at politically, Reagan got elected. Uh, John Lennon got shot. Uh, Rubik's Cube came out and ruined people's lives. And I moved. So it was a rough year, you guys. Um... Some positive things that happened in 1980. Uh, the miracle on ice. Huh? Hockey. We cared about hockey for about four seconds in the States. Uh, post-it notes to write down, hey, let's uh, remember to enjoy hockey. Uh, at the box office, Empire Strikes Back. You got uh, uh, Raging Bull, 9 to 5. Uh, what a way to make a living, said the wonderful Dolly Parton. What does your money get you in 1980? Um, if you want gas, $1.19. You want to buy a house, $68,700. And you want to get, uh, you want to be the first on your block with a Magnavox VHS player, 699 bucks. Let's talk about music. The best-selling song of the year was Blondie's Call Me. The best-selling album was Pink Floyd's The Wall. Now, do a little something with the new decade. Uh, no longer going to talk about Rolling Stones album of the year. Going to talk about the Grammys. Uh, and I'll be doing it based on the year, not the year that the Grammys aired. So these are the Grammy Award winners for 1980. Uh, the best new artist was Christopher Cross, and the album of the year was Christopher Cross, uh, the self-titled Christopher Cross. Uh, he was uh, all over the airwaves uh, with a little trickling in of Michael McDonald. Uh, but the album I'm going to talk about is Ario Speedwagon's High Infidelity. It was produced by Kevin Beamish and the band. Um, it's not even my favorite REO Speedwagon album. It really, uh, I, I, if I'm if I'm ranking my REO albums that I've been asked to a total of zero times, um, Life as We Know It is my favorite. Uh, and my favorite REO Speedwagon song is the live version uh, of Golden Country, uh, a song that was written by the criminally underrated guitarist Gary Richrath, who has since passed away, but uh, uh, never really got his due as a guitarist as far as I was concerned. Uh, but the album that I'm talking about is High Infidelity, which uh, was played on every radio station in the world. Um, I think every teenager played this album uh, until the needle wore out. Um, and as a reminder, put the needle on the record, put the needle on the record, put the needle on the record. So in 1980, I moved. I moved from hometown to Oak Forest. Um, and it's hard to make friends. Uh, I moved in the middle of the summer. Unless there's kids in the neighborhood, you don't really uh, have the opportunity to make friends. So I would go back to hometown uh, and visit my buddies there uh, quite a bit. Um, hometown, by the way, that's a that's a real name. Uh, it is uh, just south of Chicago. It is, I, I like to say it's like one mile by one mile, and it's completely surrounded by a guardrail. Um, obviously, there's some entranceways. Um, so it's kind of like a trailer park, but with actual houses. Um, I think it was built for the World War II veterans, the entire little city. And I think our house was 900 square feet. Um, anyway, hometown was a neat place to grow up, but I moved to Oak Forest and uh, I was back visiting Chris O'Donnell. Uh, not the actor, just the guy I went to school with. And he had an older brother, which I did not, who would uh, know about all the new hot albums. And the REO High Infidelity was the one that he uh, showcased for me that day. He said, hey, my brother got this REO thing and um, it, it, uh, it was perfect. For uh, for a fourteen year old Jimmy Pardo, it uh, and uh, obviously the world because the thing sold like crazy. Uh, it was the perfect record, and I bought it. And I, uh, not from Chris. I went to a store. Uh, I think that would have been unfair to buy his brother's copy. I went to a store, purchased it, and um, would listen to it. Sadly, in my uh, bedroom because again I had no friends and uh, really no reason to leave the house. I was kind of a shut in uh, until school started. Um, and then again, hard to make friends. So I would listen to this album all the time. And I, I had an R.O. Speedwagon t-shirt, um, which plays into a story of the one and only party that I was invited to in uh, my freshman year of high school was a guy by the name of Brian O'Shea, who was a great guy, uh, invited me to a party. And it was with the, with the popular kids, quote unquote. Um, 
And he said, hey, I'm having a party on Saturday night. Do you want to come? And I put on my best REO Speedwagon shirt because uh, I wanted to impress. And But it paid off because a young lady named Laura was at the party and said, hey, great shirt. Uh, and then we made out for a little bit. So you might not like REO Speedwagon, uh, but boy, were they a lifesaver for me on that very day. Uh, now, this album has the songs that you know. Uh, of course, Keep On Loving You is the one that everybody knows. Um, Don't Let Him Go was a big hit, Take It On The Run. Uh, but I like a song called I Wish You Were There, which is the closing track um, of it, and Follow My Heart, which I think is also a great song. Anyway, it's full of great songs. Um, and I had the opportunity to meet Kevin Cronin, who uh, the lead singer, basically the face of the band, uh, many, many years later. Now, dig this for a coincidence. Kevin Cronin grew up in hometown. Remember that? from way back before, hometown, mile by mile, about 5,000 people living there at the time. Now, Kevin's older than me, so he was gone by the time I lived there, but he grew up in hometown. And I think that's a coincidence because it's such a small town that when I finally had a chance to meet Kevin Cronin, I said, hey, Kevin, uh, coincidentally, I grew up in hometown as well. Uh, I grew up on Corcoran. I believe you grew up on Costner. And he looked at me and went, is that right? And walked away. Maybe he didn't live in hometown. Maybe I just heard that from a friend who heard it from a friend who heard it from another. Probably just messing around. Hey, everybody, it's time for this week's quick hit. This week's quick hit is Pink Floyd's Another Brick in the Wall Part 2. It is their only number one song uh, that they've ever had. Now, listen, I wasn't a big Pink Floyd fan when this album came out. I don't know if that won't surprise anybody. Um, I was busy listening to the cartoon of Kiss on a regular basis. Um, uh, in fact, uh, I would say this uh, to anybody that would listen to me. I don't need my music to have a message, man. Um, I then became obsessed with Pink Floyd about 30 years later and uh, realized, oh, boy, did I miss out. Could have been enjoying high school a lot more listening to this music instead of what I was choosing. Um, I did buy the album when it came out, uh, The Wall, and it wasn't for me in any way, shape, or form at the time. Uh, so I wanted to return it. So I, I brought it back to Woolco, which was uh, in the place where Corvettes once was. Now, Corvettes was a department store, but it had the greatest record. It was almost like a record store inside of a department store. That's how great their record department was. And Woolco tried to um, copy that, and they did okay. But I, I remember bringing it back, and my friend, the aforementioned Chris O'Donnell, from previously in this episode, uh, was with me, and I didn't, it was the first time I ever tried to, uh, tried to return something. So I said, yeah, I need to return that. And she's like, what for? I'm like, oh, geez, I'm getting grilled. And I said, uh, well, it's, uh, it's warped, uh, and it's skipped, um, and uh, it <laughs> And she said, okay. And she gave me my money back. And as we're walking away, Chris O'Donnell, and I, and I literally, I think about this maybe once a week. He said, why didn't you just say it wasn't round? <laughs> and it was like, you're right. But I, I mean, how many things can be wrong with one record? Uh, you, could, you would have been better off saying, oh, I opened it up and it was square. <laughs> Anyhow, this song's great. You don't need me to tell you that. Uh, enjoy uh, this week's quick hit. That is this week's episode of Jimmy's Records and Tapes. Uh, if you liked it, press that like button, uh, subscribe, do everything that needs to be done. I, of course, can be found at, at Jimmy Pardo on Twitter. And, of course, I host the award-winning podcast, Never Not Funny. We'll see you next time. Until then, the record's back in the sleeve. <laughs>